had a lesson that's been on my heart. God gave me this about four weeks ago and wanted me to teach on it. If you go ahead and turn with me to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, if you want to go along. Uh, God was showing me some things through this lesson to share with y'all today, and we're going to try to do the best we can upon it today. I'm going to be talking about, if we title this uh, lesson today, is the Christian's Weapons. And God was showing me through it that a lot of Christians today was going through things that they don't have to go through with, you know. It's simply because they don't use the weapons that God has given us to use here. And also, we got to learn through the weapons of God to know how to use them and to know when to use them. You know, it's one thing to have a weapon, and it's another thing to know how to use that weapon. You know, in the military and all, oh, they'll teach you how to use the weapons, just like God would teach us how to use the weapons through the Word of God. And we've got to know how to do that. But uh, there, and we uh, don't need to let Satan bother us too much. I, I think the people is letting, in this world that we're living in today, people are letting things bother them more. And I've never seen so much suicide and so much depression this year and I've ever heard about in all my life, you know. And if we get close to the Lord and, and trust Him, we can get through it better than if we use the weapons that we have. So we're going to uh, see what we can get out of this lesson today. First of all, I want to turn to 2 Corinthians here, uh, 10, chapter 10 and verse 4 and 5 here. Talk a little bit about our weapons. See, the weapons that God gives us, you know, they're not man-made. And they don't come from this world. But they're strong, the weapons that he gives us and wants us to use, they're strong. And there's no thing in this world can go against God's uh, weapons if we know how to use them. But let's just see what they say here in this, here today. 2 Corinthians 10, and 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Listen to this. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You hear that? To the pulling down of the stronghold. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every, th every thought to the obedience of Christ. If you notice this here, our weapons are not carnal. They're not made of this world. They're not man-made. And they're not given to us by anything but God. And if we know how to use those weapons, you know, God will help us to use them against Satan. Satan comes against us with a lot of things in this world today and tries to get us to fall. Even whenever Jesus was uh, born in, uh, in Bethlehem, the devil tried to stop him from going and to helping us today to where we could have life and have it more abundantly. But if we know what these weapons are, and I'm going to talk about them here in a little bit, here about the weapons here. Whenever we are facing things of this world today and we're facing the devil out there because we are no match for the devil today and the things that he throws at us. But there's one thing rest assured of today. We can stand on the Word of God and stand what God tells us. You remember in the old Bible, you know, in this day and time, we've got to stand with courage. We've got to be strong and of good courage in these last days that we're living in today. You remember when Joshua was there and God told him, he said, listen, my servant Moses is dead now and you're going to have to stand up and take over, you know. Here and, and you're going to have to be strong and of a good courage, you know, to fight the battle and lead my people over to the promised land there. And I'm telling us today, church, that we in these last days are going to have to be strong and of a good courage and to hold on because Satan is on the rampage. To, he's getting stronger and stronger and trying to stop God's people, but it's not going to happen, 
you know, because there's going to be a people that God loves and going to take with him in the, in the rapture here. And we got to be strong and of good courage. Whenever we have these weapons, we've got to stand tall and know how to use them against Satan and all of his devices that he throws at us today. So let's remember that to be strong and of a good courage. Now let's go to here uh, Ephesians, the sixth chapter. I'm going to begin at verse 10. Or here. It says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. What I was talking about, being strong and being courageous. You know, he wants us to be strong. And there's a lot of ways that we can be strong in the Lord in, in, in this day and time that we are living in today. We've got to learn how to pray and to seek God and get close to Him, get full of the Holy Spirit and walk with Him and talk with Him and be strong. And when we're strong in the Lord, who can be against us? Remember that? Who can be against us if we're strong in the Lord? He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We've got to have the power of God because each and every one of us in here today as individuals, we cannot fight against Satan alone. But we've got to have the power. We've got to have the strength. We've got to have the weapons that we need to fight against Satan. What are we going to do whenever we're going through a trial in the middle of the night that... Uh, Maybe God is trying us and Satan comes against us. What are we going to do? You know, when God says, well, I'm going to test them a little bit to see how they're doing, how strong they are, how much power they got. And sometimes you'll find God tests us along the journey that we're going on here. So the best way to do that is to be strong in God and, and pray and seek God. And when the time comes, you'll make it through whenever... Satan comes against us to try to destroy us. It says here to put on number 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We've got to put on the whole armor of God and, and live for him and to do. Because that wiles of the devil, it talks about, you know what that wiles mean? That means sly, that Satan is sly. He's got a lot of tricks, and he's deceiving. He's deceitful. That's what that wiles of the devil means here on this. And we've got to be uh, prayed up and have our weapons sharp and, and ready to fight against Satan here and to do what God wants, wants us to do. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the, of the devil. And here, you know, we don't wrestle against one another. We don't have conflict with one another in this world. But I tell you what we do. We're fighting an enemy out there that's of this world. You know, Apostle Paul told us that we are in this world, but we're not of this world, and we're not to be uh, of this world if we're Christians. we got to stand tall and do what God wants us to do. We don't fight against each other. But let's see what it says here. Verse 12. It says, we wrestle not, uh, not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the power, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places here. We're fighting against the enemy out there today, church, and we're no match for them. And that's why God's telling us to make sure that we've got our weapons in tune and know how to use them and know what to use in the particular time, you know. Do we know what weapon we're going to use when Satan comes against us with sickness and with temptation and with all of these things, when the pride of life is out there and when the works of the flesh start up, what weapons are we going to use here to know how to use them against, against Satan here? Because I know that there's a one in one of the books there in the four gospels there I think it said I don't, I don't remember which one it is right offhand where that Jesus said that the devil was a sly old fox and he is out there trying to destroy and the devil has come to just, to steal and to kill and destroy if he can but these weapons here against the wiles of the devil here. 
It says the spiritual conflict is uh, described as one warfare of faith that continues until we go out of this life today. You know, we tend, continuously going to have a warfare against Satan and against what he throws at us, and we've got to be strong and of a good courage and know how to use these weapons that God gives us. You know, and we're going to get deeper into this here in just a few minutes here on this. That verse 13 says, Wherefore, taking unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all to stand. I remember hearing Moses one day was telling them in the Old Testament, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. When we've gone as far as we can go, you know, and when we've prayed and we've sought God, you know, and we've got on the whole armor that we need, what we need to do is stand still because God will fight the battle for us. Did you know that? He will, he will fight that battle when it gets too hard for us, you know. When we seem like sometimes we're getting weak and, and we've not prayed like we ought to and all, and we call upon God and, He'll say, just stand still. I will take care of the problem here, you know. So he will, you know, but we're supposed to put on the whole armor. And I think that when God was showing me this is why people today is going through more than what they need to go through because they've not got the whole armor of God on. When you've got, I like to look at it this way. If you want to put on the whole armor, what we must do is to be saved. Repent of our sins. And then what I think we need to do is to be sanctified. You know, cleansing. Sanctification works from the inside out. You know, it gets us clean. And then we need to be full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit there to where that we can stand, you know. You know, and whenever we're full of the Holy Spirit and full of the Holy Ghost, and we can always say, if if God is for us, who can be against us? And we can stand with that courage and stand against the walls of the devil and stand against Satan whenever he tries to come. And not only that, whenever we see, did you know that we as Christians, when we're strong and of a good courage and got the whole armor all on here, did you know as Christians and saints of God, we are to help those that are weaker than we are? We're supposed to help them. They're going through the trial. Instead of pushing them down and instead of wondering what they have went through or what they have done, what we must do that has the whole armor of God on, we should go to them and say, Brother or sister, take my hand because I'm going to help you and I'm going to lift you up and let's get back on the firing line for God. Let's get to see if we can get on the whole armor, you know. And I'm going to read some stuff here in a minute, but I'm going to tell you about the armor of God just a minute. If you remember reading in the Old Testament, you know, when a person is called to fight a war and he puts on that whole armor there, when he puts on the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness there, you know, and got all of that armor on, they was well respected back in that day there when the armed forces would come. When, they, when people sees that, they will see that that person is a man of valor, a mighty man or woman of valor, you know, there whenever they see them dressed like that with armor. And that's what we are. The devil can look at us whenever we've got the whole armor of God on and say, I can't bother them because they've got the armor of God on. They look like a mighty man of, of valor, a mighty woman of valor, you know, and they can't penet he can't penetrate when it's like that. If you can imagine a soldier when they go out into war there, what all of they've got on, you know, there. They've got their guns, they've got their weapons, they've got everything that they need there, you know. And I was talking to Brother Barnett one time, if some of y'all may remember him, a great minister of God, you know, whenever he was going through basic training there. They give him... Uh, backpack and he told him he said what in the world are we going to do with a 60 pound backpack and they had to run 10 miles a day to get used to that thing he said what in the world are we going to do with that you know there you know and the sergeant told him you'll find 
out what to do with that when the time comes. So whenever he told me whenever he landed on Omaha Beach, he said everything that he had in that backpack come in handy. He said, I had to dig a hole quick. and We got thirsty and we had to have the water. We had to use everything that was there. And I'm telling us today in this Word of God, if we get everything this Word of God tells us to hide it in our heart, then we'll know how to use it when the time comes, brother. And sister, we'll know what to do whenever time comes. When Satan comes around and tries to tire us down and tell us to quit, tell us to give up, tell us not to witness, you know. The time comes when we read from Genesis to Revelations and hide that in our heart, we will know what to do when Satan comes around. What are you going to do when the Satan comes around and talking, you hear somebody, he uses people now, church. The devil uses people you know, out in the world and other things. What are you going to do when if you've got the whole armor on and somebody comes up talking about your brother or your sister or anybody, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll rebuke them. i say, you don't need to be a doing that. You don't need to be a talking like that. You need to get saved and quit, repent, and do your first works over. Now, I get bold sometimes, and I don't care to tell them about the things that they need to do if I see them not doing what they're supposed to do. And people can tell me not to do it or not, but if God says do it, I'm going to do it. You know. So let's look at some of the things that we need to put on here. Number 14. It says, Stand, therefore, having your loins gift about with truth. And what does the Bible say about truth? Bible tells us that if we know the truth, the truth will make us what? Free. If we know the truth and we know that we've got it and Satan comes up and says, Hey, you ain't got what you think you've got. You, you, just, uh, you just uh, believe in something that ain't true. And I would just look at him and say, Listen, Satan, get thee behind me because I know the truth and the truth has made me free. Free. I was there at the altar when God forgave me. I was there when he saved me, sanctified me, and filled me with the Holy Ghost, and I know all about the truth. When God told me you could be saved if you wanted. And I remember that God told the truth whenever I repented and, and there. So we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free here. It says, And having... It says, and having your loins gift about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness here. How many people today is right? How many people today are here today that's got that righteousness? If we got that breastplate of righteousness on, you know what that does? You know, when you put that breastplate of righteousness on and when that armor is on there, there's not going to be nothing that Satan throws at you that's going to get to that heart, you know. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, you know, there. And if you've got that blessed breastplate of righteousness on and you've got that armor on, you throw it at me, Satan, because that dart is going to fall off and you're not going to penetrate because I'm going to well, express my love and I'm going to well, stand tall and I'm going to, Act like a Christian, talk like a Christian, and walk like a Christian, and help people that needs help. You know, and that's what we've got to do today, church. We've got to have that whole armor on to know how that we can fight against the enemy here. You know, so that's what we need to do: is get that breastplate of righteousness on, where nothing can get and penetrate our heart. We know that we're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, and our heart is right with God. That's enough for me. Praise the Lord. I'm about to shout up here now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Here. It says, Stand therefore having your loins about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Here. That's good. Having your feet shod with the preparations of the gospel of peace. I want to read that again. It says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace here. If we've got that gospel hid in our heart, what are we going to do? 
you know. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You know, when Thomas calls me to teach, now I don't study lightly, I study, you know, because when God gives me something, it's like Jeremiah. The gospel in there and the word is like fire shut up in my bones. And I'm going to tell it, you know, and I'm going to express it. Even on my job, I express. I help a lot of people on my job. They come to me and ask me about things, and I'll tell them, hey, listen, I'm going to give you my opinion, but that ain't what, I, what you need to go by. You need to go by the Word of God and go what thus saith the Word of God. And I go to the Word, and I give them scriptures and tell them. And that's sharing the gospel. A lot of people think that the pastor and evangelists and, and missionaries has to share the gospel. But that's good, but that's not all true. We as individuals, as Christians, you know, we need to share the gospel of peace and share what God has given us so we can help others anywhere that we go. And, you know, just everywhere we walk, just tell them about Jesus. God carries you way over yonder or overseas. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about God and tell what God has done for us here. You know, uh, verse 16 here. Now, I'm going to tell you, verse 16 carries a lot of things. You can go from Genesis to Revelation on verse 16. It says, above all, above all, and we've got to have this, church, if we're going to stand in these last days. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith here, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Taking the shield of faith. Now, let's look at this verse just a minute here. Taking that shield of faith. What are you going to do when Satan comes around and gives, say, he tries to throw the word of doubt. He tries to throw doubt at you. What are you going to do when that fiery dart comes towards you? Well, you're going to raise that shield of faith, and that's not going to hit me, you know. What are you going to do whenever he throws that dart of fear? If you've got that armor on, if you've got that shield of faith on, you will stop that. You will go to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 and you can just tell him, hey, listen, Satan, God has not given me the spirit of fear but of love and of power and of sound mind here. And we're going to, and I know that I know that I'm going to keep that faith, you know. You know, by faith, you know, Noah built an ark. By faith, I'm going to make it to heaven because I'm going to stand on the faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm hoping for a better life than this. And I'm going to keep that shield of faith there when Satan says, you hadn't got nothing. You know, I've got faith. I'm going to tell him I've got faith and I'm going to stand for that faith. You know. And to have all of this armor and to have all of this faith, you know what we got to do? we got to do like uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, I believe it is, said we've got to study. To show ourselves approved, a workman need not to be ashamed. R unto God now, not to the world, but he says unto God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And if we do that, we will know. We can build up that faith through the word of God and, and to know what God wants us to do and have that shield of faith. Everything. Somebody talking about me, I'm going to put that up there. I'd rather for them talk about me than talk about my brother or sister because I know what I've got, you know. Let them talk because I'm, I'm a child of the king and I'm going to stand firm for God. Put up that shield of faith, you know. You know, when a brother or sister is not around in the church, when the pastor is not around, when the evangelist is not around, if it comes against you, hold up that shield of faith. Stop those fiery darts that Satan is throwing at us, you know. And stay strong. Be strong and of good courage. Be courageous. Stand still for the power for the Lord here, and He will help us here. Praise God. Oh, I'm feeling this, ain't y'all? That's good. That's good. Verse 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, with a, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dust of the devil. Number 17, it says, And take the helmet of salvation. Now, what happens whenever you put on the helmet of salvation? 
put that helmet on, you know. And Satan comes to you if you've got the whole armor on and you've got the armor of God on and you've got that helmet of salvation on, you've got that thing on and all, you've got it on there when somebody starts pounding on you about this or pounding on you about doubt and fear and all of this, they can't penetrate. They, Satan, he cannot. When you've got that helmet on, he cannot put thoughts. He cannot put things in, the, in your mind you know, to where that you doubt, that you've not got no faith and you're not standing with God, you've not got the whole armor on because it won't penetrate there, through there. You know, if we put thoughts in our hearts, or, you know, he puts thoughts in there. I know he does the sinners, you know, but if we got that whole armor on, we got that helmet on and the breastplate of righteousness and that salvation like we need to have, we can stand tall for God, can't we? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know. But we are to put on that helmet to where he can't put thoughts and things. You know. Somebody told me one time, you know, and I tell it to Satan every once in a while, if you can't say good, something good about somebody, don't say nothing at all. That's a good saying, ain't it? You know. That's talking about good thoughts. Somebody asked you about the brother, I said, yeah. They asked you about your sister, yeah, they're good. They're good Christian. They're good people, you know, you know. I said, we ain't made it to heaven yet. We're still a work, and we ain't got a glorified body yet. We're still a holding on to God, still a striving to enter in, you know, and all of that. But we need to, to have good thoughts. Think on these things. Paul said, think on these things. Think of good things. Think of the things that we need to think on here. After we got the helmet of salvation on, then we need to take the sword of the Spirit, which is this, the Word of God. This is one of the most important things that is in this Scripture here. When we've got uh, the Word in, that is hid in our heart, the Bible says that Word is sharper than any two-edged sword piercing the sun. You know, whenever we do something wrong, that Word will correct. Whenever we're fixing to say something about somebody, that Word will correct. And we need to do like the psalmist said, hide that word in the heart that we might not sin against God. That's the armor. When we got the whole armor of God on, church, we cannot do anything like that. We can always stand tall and, and stand like a mighty man of valor, you know, unto God and have that word. Because that word is a lamp unto our feet, ain't it? And a light unto our path, you know. If we got the word, what did Jesus do when Satan took him out into the wilderness to tempt him? What did he do to Satan when he tried to tempt him when he was hungry? Make these stones bread. God, Jesus told him, hey, listen. You know, you can't live for bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know. And that's what we do. To me, I don't know about y'all, to, to me... This word is like food and to, to like a, you sit at the table and eat dinner or something. This is like food to me. I've got to have it every day. I've got to have it hid in my heart because I never know when somebody's going to come up and ask me a question about this or that and we need to be ready to, you know, to tell them about the word and, and where it's at and, and what to do there whenever they want us to help them. And we need it whenever we witness you know, somebody is to say another day, you know, they said I had to correct them a little bit. You ever corrected anybody? My wife corrects me a lot sometimes, you know, like my mother used to correct me. But somebody said the other day where I was working, said money's the root of all evil. I said, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. That ain't what the Scripture says. We got to know the Scripture, church. We've got to hide it in our heart. The Bible says the love of money. Didn't that what it said? The love of money is the root of all evil. God gives us money for the tool that we need to get by in this world. It's just a tool. It's His anyway, so I'm just using what He has given me there. So let us today to hide that word in our heart and put on the whole armor of God that we can withstand when Satan comes. Get that helmet of salvation, you know. You know, and get that uh, 
feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, you know. You know what Isaiah says about that, you know? Oh, the only thing that I told a preacher this one time, and he just had a fit laughing, you know. I told him, I said, the only thing that's pretty on you, preacher, is your feet. Because that's what Isaiah said, how beautiful are the feet of them that carries the gospel, you know, of peace, you know, around. So I'm going to tell you all, that's the prettiest thing on us is our feet because we're sharing the word with people. I'm just kidding. Man. But, uh, but let us today, to hide that word in our heart, put on the whole armor, and to remember to use that shield of faith that where Satan cannot throw those fiery darts at us that will penetrate. You know, I like to think if I get a little low on my Christian praying and I raise up that shield of faith when he's throwing that dart, you know, I want to see if that breastplate of righteousness will pick up a difference there, brother. If that dart misses that shield of faith, you know, I want to make sure that I have that on, you know. So we're to put on the whole armor of God today and know what God wants us to do. Because there's people in this world are hurting. Do you know that? And let me tell you something. God showed me something in this lesson, telling me through the Spirit that this next year and the days to come and the months to come, it's going to get harder on the Christian people because the world is getting bad out there. And we're going to have to have the whole armor of God to stand. Having, all, having done all to stand, let us stand what the Bible says. Have that courage. Be strong and of a good courage. And be courageous because Jesus is coming. You know that? Jesus is coming. And we want to be ready to go. So let's put on the shield of faith. You know, the armor of God that we can be able to withstand in the last days. And there's a lot of times in my Christian life that I have found that sometimes I've done all that I could do and I just have to stand and wait on the, the Lord to get through and to do what he needs to do for me. Because, you know, Jesus is an intercessor, ain't he? He's sitting at the right hand of Father, at the Father, John, First John says, to make intercession for us. You know, if we pray and we seek God and we've done all that we can do, you know, I believe that we can just look through our, our mind and think that we can see Jesus standing up and, and holding up his hand and looking at the Father and said, I'm going to take over now and help him there. And the Spirit will take over with groaning so it cannot be uttered. You know, and if we got the whole armor off, we can work for God. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am not a coward in God's army, you know. When God tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. When he tells me to witness, I'm going to do it. When he says to go talk to somebody, I'm going to do it. You know, you know. And it's time that we stand like a mighty army. There was a book out, Like a Mighty Army. You ought to read it sometime for God. And hold on to the faith, church, and hold on, because Jesus is coming soon, you know. I hope you enjoyed the lesson today. I hope I've said something that will lift you up and help us to get to put on the whole armor of God and to know what to do when Satan comes around and tries to destroy us and tries to get us to quit. I'm not going to quit because I've got the truth and I can look back when Satan tells me you cannot go to heaven. I can tell him I can look back when I seen Jesus in the manger when he was born in Bethlehem. And then not only that, Satan, whenever I seen him die upon the cross there, read about him on the cross, and, and the third day he risen, you know. You know, and you know what I can say? You know, when I see all of that, and I can say I can, will not be defeated, you know, because when Jesus died upon the cross, he done away with all of that stuff that Satan, he done away with Satan's weapons. And he give us the whole armor of God and give us the weapons that we can use through the word of God. This right here, this Bible is my weapon and it should be your weapon too to use on Satan, you know. 
And God bless you, and I hope you have a good day.